Okay, so I was asked a question about how to loft profiles along uh, forms. So in this case, you see there's a, there's a profile which is actually an adaptive component. And if we go into that, we can take a look at, at what that is. And here it is. It's two, two adaptive points and um, a line drawn between them and an arc drawn around them. And I've tried various ways to make this work, and I really couldn't make it work. And I don't exactly know why. But I wanted to do an interesting study and just figure out if I could just do it in this environment without a profile. So what I did was this. I'm going to make two reference points. I'm going to host them on these the edges of these two arcs. Now, these are sort of, it's an uneven, um, you have an extrusion with a couple of splines. There's one on the, on the inside and one on the outside. And then you have a void running through the center with another one. So the thickness of this of this arch is not consistent and that may be part of the problem but I don't know why. So anyway I've hosted these two points I'm going to go down and grab one of the points and I'm going to um, actually change this location to the end and I'm going, to, I'm going to say you know point position is the parameter of that the point on that curve I'm going to grab this one, whoops, I'm going to grab, sorry, this guy, and I'm going to leave him at beginning, and I'm going to say point position and say okay, and you'll see these guys like sort of line up, and I'm going to, I'm going to do something so I can drive these things and observe the way the parameters behave. So I'm going to set my, my base plane as my, as my work plane, and I'm going to come down here and just create a, a circle. Grab that circle, create form. I'm going to ask me what kind of form I'm going to ask it to do a cylinder. I'm going to grab the bottom of that, lock profiles. And once I've done that, you'll see I now have offset parameters. I'm going to make this offset parameter, I'm going to call it piston. Once again, thanks to Zach Crone for showing me this cool trick. It's a way to drive parameters. So I've got this, this thing called piston. And I can just drag the top of the piston up. And you'll see that that perimeter, that positive offset perimeter, is changing. I can come in here and change this to 5,000 or whatever kind of fits on the screen is convenient. So I'll, I'll leave it at 5,000. Once I've done that, I can come in here and cross link my point position to that. So I'll call it piston divided by 5, 1, 2, 3. Because I want it to basically go from 0 to 1. And that will change the location of the points along those, those arcs. So I've done that, and you see they, they seem like they disappear. But what they've actually done is they've come down to, uh, to the other side. So I'll grab this, this piston top, and I'll just drag it back down. And you'll see these guys rotate around to the other side. So crank it up a little bit. You'll see they go up. So that's, you know, that allows me to see what's happening while I'm messing around with these parameters. So I'll grab these two guys also, and I'll create a spline through point and create a reference line between them. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw another point on that reference line here. I'm going to set the plane of that point and set another point on that plane. And once I've done that, I'm going to grab it. I'm going to do it off of the point to make sure I've set it on that work plane and not on the line by mistake. Then I'm going to kind of drag it over and it's going to give me a warning saying there's identical points in the same place. Thank you. And then let's crank it out like some, some amount. Let's, I'm not sure what the scale of this is. That's not enough. Okay, so now I've got this point which is sort of related to those two points. And you see if I grab this line again, or excuse me, the piston, drag it up a little bit, those guys are now all moving relative to one another. And what I can do now is grab these three points and do a spline through points and make that a reference line. Now I've tried this already and this didn't work, but the issue is I can... If I try and grab the edge of this arc, and then I come in, and I grab this curve, whoops, sorry, I made a divided curve, 
do it again. Grab this arc edge, grab this curve, and I say create form. It does weird things. It doesn't seem to like it. And what I was hoping to do is extrude that curve along the arch and make it, um, you know, sort of fair out that arch end. And I don't know why that's not behaving correctly. So what I tr decided to do is try a few things. So I'll come in with a circle. I'm going to set that curve, make a, cur a circle here. Whoops. Try this again. Make a circle here. And another one here. And I'm going to grab those guys and make those reference lines so they don't dissolve when I erase whatever I might make with them. Let's see again if these guys are all kind of cohesive and moving together. Yeah, they are. Yeah, and it gives you a warning about lines being slightly off axis. I don't really understand why that is. But now let's see like what happens in the behavior of these things. Now I know that um, things that are like shapes that are directly hosted on a line tend to behave okay. So let's check this out. If I control select the circle and that line say create form, it does it. So it's sort of, you know, I don't think there's anything inherently wrong with these, these lines. It's just when you try to use two of them and, and, and somehow loft a shape between them, it doesn't seem to want to do it. So I'll erase that. And I'm going to try one floating out in space somewhere. And remember, this is sort of like hosted several levels out off of a line at a point. So let's see how this behaves. Doesn't want to do it. Let's try this guy. Create form, and it doesn't want to do it. See, I, th I think that I think that what Revit only wants to do is it wants to take something that's maybe two levels out from a host and allow a kind of lofting relationship to exist. See, that one worked. So you know, it's it's kind of weird. I don't know why that's behaving that way. But it's in, it's interesting behavior to watch. And I think also if I leave that guy there, let's see what happens if I do the piston. Yeah, it actually doesn't break the relationship, which is kind of interesting. So I'll grab this guy, delete him, and I'm not quite sure. Maybe if I try the middle one and the inside line, let's see if that does something. Nope, can't do it. So. Uh, haven't solved the problem. I don't know. I don't know why this problem exists. Clearly, things will loft along these edges under certain circumstances, but not all. So that's an interesting thing to, to observe.